It's a sound you hear every day. A sound that means you're going home. October 1st, 2024, just after sunset in Jaffa. Hundreds of people, shoulder to shoulder, phones out, minds elsewhere. For them, the biggest problem is comfort, a missed seat, a delayed stop. They don't know the system designed to protect them failed hours earlier. They don't know the station is unmanned. They don't know no one is really watching. According to official investigations, seven people would die that night. Seventeen more would be injured. But the attack itself was only the final moment. The real failure began years earlier. To understand what happened, we start here. Ehrlich Station. According to public records and testimony, two assailants entered the system without resistance. No checkpoints, no active screening, no security presence. This wasn't a breach, it was normal access. That's the first uncomfortable truth. The light rail was never designed to stop a determined attacker at the point of entry. When the attack began, passengers were trapped inside a closed system, following automated rules, not human judgment, not emergency logic, programming. The system did exactly what it was built to do, just not what people assumed it would do. In 2025, Israel's state comptroller released a report on light rail preparedness. It didn't describe a single mistake, it described a structural void. Key finding, there is no clear legal authority requiring specific security standards during the planning phase of the light rail. Let that sink in. The police, the agency responsible for internal security, had no binding authority over how the system was designed. This created a bureaucratic blind spot where responsibility existed everywhere and nowhere. Underground stations change everything. According to the comptroller's findings, emergency communication was unreliable. Radio signals struggled underground. Coordination between police, medical services, and operators was inconsistent. In a crisis, seconds matter. But underground, even communication becomes a challenge. The report also highlighted a long-term decline in trained security personnel not caused by war, not caused by surprise, caused by policy decisions, reduced contracts, cut training, unfilled positions. Some stations were left unmanned during peak hours, not because no one noticed, because no one was legally required to fix it. While these gaps widened, construction accelerated. New lines, new tunnels, new timelines. According to the Comptroller, emergency scenarios predicting high casualties were rejected during planning. Why? Because accepting them would require more spending, more infrastructure, more delays. Risk ignored is cheaper than risk prepared for. This isn't about intent, it's about incentives. Opening a line on time is visible. Preventing a hypothetical disaster is not. In cities like London, security is statutory. Design must account for worst-case scenarios before construction begins. In Tokyo, past attacks reshaped infrastructure, not just staffing. The lesson is simple. Security isn't something you add later. It's something you design from the start. Israel exports security expertise around the world. But at home, infrastructure planning followed a different logic. The state comptroller's report is technical, dry, unemotional. But its message is clear. The same planning model is being used for future lines. The same authority gaps remain the same assumptions persist. This is not a story about fear. It's a story about foresight. Modern transit systems move fast. Threats move faster. 
ignoring that reality doesn't make it disappear. The question isn't whether another failure is possible. The question is whether the warning will be acted on before the system is tested again.